Hey everyone, it's Game Dev with Drew, and today we're going to be looking at grid-based movement. Before we get into this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Now, let's get into the video. So, we're going to make a new node for our players in our current uh, Game Dev with Drew uh, Godot Engine uh, project, but we're just going to make just a different scene so that we can have two different games, basically. So, we're going to make an other node, and it's going to be an Area 2D. Now you're going to be like, Drew, why is it an Area 2D for a player? Well, it's just using an Area 2D so that we know if we are interacting with any any um, objects or colliding with uh, walls or enemies as well. So with this Area 2D, we can rename it to Tile Character. And then we can just add a new child node of a Collision 2D and we'll make this a square. The square will have the extents of uh, 64 by 64 and we will also add in a sprite. So with the sprite we're just gonna go with our normal sprite. Uh, let's just go with random guy here and we're going to also make this guy um, 64 by 64 so in order to do that we need to just scale him up a little bit so let's just make him uh make him five times bigger five times bigger and perfect he's perfectly scaled up but he looks a little uh bad so let's go import him on um as a preset 2d pixel and re-import him and now he looks good so that's good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a Raycast 2D. We're going to add one Raycast 2D. Um, and Raycast are just, they're going to detect if we're colliding with anything. So with this Raycast 2D, we're going to make it look like this. We're going to enable it. And we are going to... Uh, let's make it a little wider so we can see it, but it doesn't it doesn't collide any wider, and that looks good. Um, yeah, let's make it 128, so that's double our character. And now that we have that, we are going to just go into our basic movement. So we're going to add a new script, and we're going to tile character, and we're going to put him in our tile character into scripts. Make a new folder of tile-based movement. Now we're going to open that. We're going to press create. And we're going to delete everything except for func underscore ready because that is important. We're going to do two new variables. We're going to do var uh, tile size. And our tile size is going to be 64 because our character is 64. And we're also going to make uh, inputs, which is going to be a dictionary. And our dictionary is just going to be our right input, and our which is just going to be vector two dot right. And then you can just assume what it's going to be next. It's going to be uh, left, and that's going to be vector two dot left. And then we're going to have uh, up which is going to be vector two dot up. Very simple. And finally, we're going to have down, which is just going to be, you guessed it, vector two dot down. Now that we have that, we're just going to make sure that our tile size is the same as our uh, normal tile size. So let's add this in the scenes and just do tile based movement. Turn on your grid snap, uh, it's automatically going to be 64 by 64. And then let's drag our little tile character in here, and he's going to snap perfectly. And when we run this scene specifically, he is going to be on the grid. Trust me, he's on the grid. Next, we're going to go into a new function, which is going to be unhandled input. And unhandled input is basically just like, Something that nothing happens until you input again. So we're going to do 
forward direction in input dot keys if event dot is underscore action underscore pressed direction and then we're going to make a new function func move direction and that function is just going to be position plus equals inputs direction position plus equals inputs which is remember up here the dictionary and then we're going to do direction which is the dictionary of zero to four or right left up down um, and then multiply that by tile size and then multiply that by tile size the reason why this works is because um, we're going to so right is just going to be 0 and then 64. So we're going to move to the right and then stuff like that. It's just going to be, it's basically math. Uh, also, it's supposed to be inputs.keys. Just uh, the reason why it's inputs.keys is you're getting the keys of all of our inputs. So we're doing a for loop to get all of the inputs and everything like that. So now when we play our scene, we're going to see that we don't move, but we are moving because um, we're going to print our uh, position. So next, we also have to put in our project settings, our different input maps. So we're going to do up, down, left, right. And then we're just going to do key, W, S, uh, A, and then D. And now we're going to print our position and now we're going to go into our scene and see that our position is negative 64 and then if I go up it's 0 negative 128 and then you keep on going up. So now I'll I guess I'll just code in a little uh, grid map. So I made this little quick sprite so let's just make a new tile set. Uh, you guys already know how to make a new tile map so we're just going to do that. We're going to make the cell custom transform 1 1. And then we're going to just add in a new tile set and make that tile set this little sprites. I'm going to new, make a new single tile and we're going to click. And that's going to be our new single tile that we can walk over. Don't worry about this red. I was going to do that for collision, which, I can, which I'm going to be doing next. Um, so green is going to be go, obviously. Um, so we're going to save this tile map as just tile map dot scene inside of tile based movement. We're now just going to drag in this tile map and draw. It's also not centered. So um, and you can actually make this grid centered perfectly. If you go into the position and just set it to zero zero. Now you can see that he's in the center of this position. You just had to make it zero zero. And now let's go on to collision. Um, we're going to go into our code and inside of our move direction, we're actually going to make, um, and we're going to make a new on ready var ray. And it's just going to be equivalent to our ray cast 2d. And inside of our move direction, we're going to do ray dot cast to and we're going to cast to our inputs um, at direction and multiply it by our tile size so that we know what where we're actually going and now if that doesn't work we have to force it to update so we're going to do ray dot force uh, ray cast update and if our ray is not colliding we're just going to do this so uh, what we're going to do with our raycast is we're going to make it collide with area, areas and bodies, and we're going to go into our tile map and see and make a new tile uh, that is 
this red box. So with this red box, we're gonna make a new single tile, make it red, add in collision for it as well. So now that we added collision in that in for that, we can start drawing. Uh, so we'll go into to our tile map and we will draw some red tiles that we will not be able to walk into. So we'll save that and we will see that we cannot move and down here we'll see that it is not updating. You can even see when we turn on our collision shapes, our raycast is colliding and we are not allowed to move down any further. So that is really all I need to show you guys about grid-based movement. This is so powerful when it comes to making a roguelike because I love roguelikes as well as RPGs. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.